Hello, welcome back to my studio. Today I'm going to do a long demonstration. So if you want to sit back and watch a whole painting take shape, then this is the video for you. Stick around and I'll tell you more about what I'm going to be painting today. Well, I started using Rembrandt paints about a year ago and I did a review about Rembrandt paints and you can find that in my past videos and I thought it would be a good idea to paint something a little more European centered instead of my usual sort of warm South African climate scenes. So I picked a subject that uh, Rembrandt would have been familiar with if he liked to paint outdoors. Maybe it's something more uh, in line with later impressionists but what could be more Dutch than windmills and water. So a classic scene that I'm going to show you how I went about painting it and maybe it'll inspire you to try something sort of more moody in this type of genre. All right, let's get into the painting itself. Well, here's the reference, something unusual for me. And I'm going to start off with a color and value study using the Graffitant watercolors. I've reviewed these before and a very useful medium starting with the darkest darks and you may say why start with the darkest darks if this is a watercolor i'm using but uh, as i said it's a value study more than anything else i'm trying to get an idea of what it's going to be like painting this in oils or even acrylics in other words an opaque medium So it also helps me to iron out not only the values, but any problems I'm going to encounter with the subject and gets me thinking about the subject before I commit to it in oils. You don't want to start a project and get halfway and realize you're completely and utterly lost and defeated by the subject. Now, this particular scene is not something I've ever painted before. In fact, I've never painted windmills like this. And there's a lot of little uh, differences for me. First of all, the values of the scene in general, it's mostly lights and light middle values. There's no strong light dark as I'm used to in uh, my typical landscapes dominated with trees and maybe mountains and things like that. So in that respect, it's very different. I have to work out ways to paint towards my strengths, I think is the right way to look at it. With all the, the water and reflections and it's very calm water. So it's kind of mirror of the, the sky. And whatever I do in the sky has got to show up in the water and read correctly. So these are things I'm thinking about. Also where I'm going to diverge from the reference. That's also very important because if you don't want to paint an absolute copy of the painting, you've got to know where you can diverge and where you shouldn't. Uh, you don't want to change things too much, but I might want to emphasize different colors in the sky. I probably will bring in uh, uh, soft purples and uh, some blues as well. But at this point, it's also a fun watercolor sketch. The sort of thing that you would do in a painting on plain air, for instance, to get a quick sketch, get familiar with the subject. But I'm doing this in the studio and it's just as helpful. And I've also discovered the unusual structure of the windman, windmill sails and uh, the blades also quite uh, strange to me, never having painted these objects before. Of 
So there's the little graffitant study. Look out for that video at the end of this where I review the graffitants. Now I'm going to be using Rembrandt oils as I mentioned and also fairly standard palette for me. I've actually added Viridian because it's a more of a European green in my opinion and it could come in useful. Starting off with the darks as I did with the watercolor. Trying to get a basic sort of sketch. Now I'm approaching this slightly different as well to my usual subjects. As I said, most of the scene is light to middle value. It's very calm. Everything is quite smooth. <laughs> Water and... Uh, so I'm going to try and get that without diverging too much from my usual practice of painting with uh, thicker layers of paint. I'll bring in some impasto as I finish this off, but I think it's going to be more important to incorporate some sort of blending of color, getting some smoother texture, especially in the water. And those clouds are going to require quite a bit of blending as well. I'm not sure I'm confident enough with this subject to just go straight in with a lot of thick paint. So I'll clean up that palette and I'll start with the light values. And as you can see, most of the painting is light value. Let's uh, block in some shapes for the clouds, keeping it very loose at this point. And I will work things out as I go along. But just a, a general idea of clouds and where the focal point's going to be. Obviously, around the biggest windmill would be the best place to have a focal point. And uh, I'll have to bring that out or bring that forward with some lights in the sky. Now I'm going to mix up a gray color using the cerulean blue, a bit of the deeper yellow, some red, and getting those sort of warm grays and cool grays. Yeah, I've brought in some alizarin and a bit of cerulean here to get a slightly more purple or violet color, I should say, a, a warm violet. And uh, using my bristle brush to blend this all in. Once I've got a pattern that I'm happy with, I'll start bringing in the impasto lights. That would be titanium white and some yellow. But you've got to get the foundation in first. Now the colors above the horizon line. I'm warming those up with titanium white and a little bit of that lemon yellow and some of the blue. And it gives a bit of depth and also a gradient to the sky as that will move up into the clouds and the bit of blue sky showing through. Now preparing the, the water So the reflections in the water will be darker than the uh, lights from the sky. So lights reflect darker and dark shapes reflect a bit lighter. So all of those clouds in the sky will show up in the water a bit darker. And just keep that in mind. You've got to try and just line things up as well so they read correctly. Mm -hmm. 
working very loosely. I'm not trying to get accurate shapes at this stage. It's still, as I said, the block end stage. I'm also thinking about a sense of depth in the painting. Cooler colors in the distance, bigger brush marks in the foreground, smaller brush marks in the distance. Things like that help to create the impression of depth. Ah, the windmill shapes. I'll finalize them as I go and leave the, the windmill blades till last. And they're quite fiddly but quite small and I want to paint them over the, the sky colors. Not much in the line of scenery behind these windmills, just a few trees and bushes. Now it is an overcast day, but I can't resist trying to get some color into the painting. So I'm going to take a few liberties and assume the, the sun is trying to break through. And some of that light will hit the, the grass as well on the, the side of the river banks, creating a bit more color. I'm using a number six long flat bristle brush and I'm painting on a piece of Archer's oil painting paper. I'm using the full piece, so this is an A4 size. Trying to keep the colors on the, the side of the bank here relatively loose. I don't want too much detail. I just want an arrangement of shapes that is interesting. So it's a combination of lights and darks. Really not much to it and that in fact makes it a little more difficult if you want to create a bit more out of it. Got to remind myself though, this painting is about sky and water more than anything else. I've swapped to a number four round brush for some of these smaller shapes. Still bristle. So it's the arrangement of light and dark shapes and warm and cool color that give a painting some interest and uh, sort of a dynamic that is more interesting to the eye. You want to just naturally look at contrasts as light contrasts against dark. So I'm always looking where I can cut in with some of the light colors as I'm doing here and emphasize a few of those more abstract shapes in the, the trees and shrubs. I'm making the reflection of the windmill slightly lighter and treating the main windmill shape here as a strong dark shape. Now I don't mind making a shape slightly bigger because I know I can cut in with the sky colors and uh, finalize the shape that way and hopefully cutting in also makes the shape a little more interesting. It's quite a useful technique and uh, as I said paint your first shape bigger because you can cut in to correct the size much better than trying to enlarge a shape that was too small to begin with and that usually gets things a bit more muddied up.
trying out some cooler yellows against the, the darks. Unfortunately, I'm trying to make something interesting uh, on these or out of these shapes that aren't particularly interesting to begin with. So it's a case of trying to be patient. There's a nice light strip along the bank as well that adds a bit of contrast. So that's a bit better. I think you just have to make do with what you've given You can't always push things too far. I'm putting some really strong contrasting color in there and I quite like it, but it's not really in the painting. So I am pushing those values perhaps a little more than they should be. But we can always change it. Just try it. Just try something. If you have an idea, experiment with it. See if it works. The shapes against the sky need to be soft edged and somewhat diffused. Otherwise, there are much too many hard edges. The hard edges are mostly in the first windmill, of course, and maybe along the embankment. And they will get the, the first bit of attention from the viewer before moving into the rest of the painting. Further down here, shapes become much softer, lighter, softer edged. Okay, time to get back into the, the sky. I've mixed up a light grayish blue with cerulean, alizarin and white. Put in a bit of ultramarine there and getting the slightly darker, more violet look. My usual sky color is cerulean, but that's mostly for a sunny day. In more overcast conditions, ultramarine could be the best color to use to get that more somber or moody look to the sky. Also edges, I will have to keep edges soft. As I'm doing here, just softening up these edges with a bit of a lighter blue. So I'm keeping an eye on the reference, trying to get the arrangement of lights and darks in the sky more accurate. Now I'm just going to cut in a bit to get that windmill shape, the roof of the windmill just a little more accurate. I'll work in that as I go. The problem is the paint is all still wet and I'm picking up those darks and I don't want them contaminating my sky colors. So I'm not afraid to make changes. If I don't quite like the arrangement of the clouds, then uh, I change them. It's all a design and you are the designer, you're the artist and you've got to, you've got to like what's there. These lights are titanium and lemon yellow and blending that into the under layer where necessary to soften an edge. Mm -hmm. 
Obviously working wet into wet makes the blending part a lot easier. But I am caught in the dilemma of do I want the sky to be relatively soft and blended like this or get in some thick impasto and get the lights really pushing. So in this respect I'm going to follow a more traditional approach. Maybe if I do the subject again I will take that uh, extra step to make it more expressive with a lot more thicker paint and, and bolder strokes of the brush. But every approach has its pluses and minuses, so don't worry about it. If this is your idea of how to paint this, then that's what you do and just see it through and assess it at the end. You can always do another version. Now, as the lights merge into the darks of the cloud, you need to soften those edges up. Here I'm bringing in a bit more deeper violet for the heavier part of the clouds that are in shadow. And these violets show up quite well against the lights on the clouds. Bringing in a bit of blue showing through as well, I quite like that effect. I also want to pick up some of these blues in the reflections in the water, so they have to be there. And uh, whatever you're going to show up in the reflections must be in the sky to begin with. Re-establish some of those highlights. and re-establish some of the light above the horizon. Okay, the part I'm looking forward to is fin finishing the, the windmill, so let's get back into that. The distant windmills must be quite vague and lost in the atmospheric effect of the distance. So don't make them too strong. I've actually made them quite large. The second one could be a bit lower. But uh, never mind, as long as the sense of depth and distance is not lost completely, it's, it's fine. Now reflections are a fun part of any painting with water. But I do prefer a water that's moving to get more broken color. This is quite difficult because I've got to give the impression of very still water. But that can trap you if you start making the reflections hard edged as well. You've got to try and keep that in mind and make your reflections softer. Some of those greens are reflecting into the water. But not, not quite exactly. I think it's important also to remember you've got to look at your positive shapes, the shapes on the land being reflected into the water. 
and make sure your reflection is lighter or darker as the case may be. So you have to be guided by what you've actually put on the canvas first of all. All right, got the rigger brush. Now let's get some sails onto these windmills. Painting it loose so I get some broken color. And I want these windmills to look a little bit of a, a broken color effect against the sky. It does help if your rigger brush is a little bit out of shape like mine is, and that immediately gets me a bit of broken color straight away. It's a, just needs to be a bit longer. That's a bit better. Soften those edges up there. Well, completing the windmills does certainly help to, to pull things together a bit. Remember, you can cut in with background color to tidy things up. Just keep momentum, keep the painting moving forward. See what needs to be added, put it down. You can always come back in and correct, but don't immediately correct every tiny little detail. Otherwise, your painting is going to look terribly overworked before you know it and doesn't do much for your confidence. few little highlights, they're not there in the reference, but I think they add a little something. Into the reflections, just have a look at your reference as well. Make sure you've got everything in the right direction. Cutting in a touch there. Now for these distant ones, you got to just be careful. You don't overdo the edges and make things look too hard. Blur the edges slightly. Just keep it looking like it's far away and perhaps also moving.
And the next area to work on is this entire foreground. So back to the, the larger brush. And uh, improvising, just trying to get colors that are going to help this painting along. Keeping an eye on what I've already put in the sky, of course, to make sure I match those up. Here I'm scumbling with quite thick warm white, just dragging that over the thin layer below to get a slightly broken color effect. I am, as I said, departing from the, the reference somewhat. I've wanted to make this painting a little more light fold. Yeah, just dragging the brush through some of those reflections to get that broken light in the water. I will darken up the foreground a little as a lead in to the scene. Just trying to work out that color now with a bit of ultramarine, alizarin, and burnt sienna. And this shadow in the foreground is suggested in the reference, so uh, it's fine. It also just adds that contrast between light and dark, as you can see here. Helps me get a little bit of sparkle in the water. I've put some clouds behind the windmill so they can show up in the water here as well as a contrast. Back to the rigger brush for a few smaller zings of light. I also want to soften up the reflection of the, the windmill. It's a little hard edge there, so we'll get to that. In the meantime, just softening some of these edges here as well. Bringing a little bit of blue-violet to cool that reflection down a bit. Just dragging some light across the darks to get broken light. Soften these edges up as well, break this up a bit. And this edge to just make it look a little more watery. I think that's a bit better. Well, I've got to stop. That should do. It's a nice little sketch. I quite enjoyed doing it. So there it is, something different. Well, I hope you enjoyed that demonstration. It's not a scene that is particularly familiar to me, so I don't really do that very often. But as a just a fun little project. I quite enjoyed it myself. And that's all you want after all. Do something a little different, 
keeps you a bit fresh and inspired to get back to your painting. Now don't forget I've got a free course for you up here. It's something new and I think you'll enjoy it. And please make sure you've subscribed to this channel because I post new videos quite regularly and you'll be notified of those videos as well. And there's more to see on my website at malcolmdeweyfineart.com. Lots of painting courses and free information and have a look at some of my paintings. Right, until next time, happy painting and cheers for now.